Hi, I'm the Grow Boss. I run a hydroponic store, write the grow book and equipment guide, and help a thousand growers a year get started. So you know I get asked every question there is about everything, including bugs, and how to get rid of them, which I can do. But first we have to figure out what bug it is. So here's what I've learned over the years. 99% of all bug problems come down to five bugs, spider mites, aphids, thrips, white flies, and gnats. And I also want you to know that getting rid of bugs is not one of those one and done situations because you're never going to kill everything with just one spray, even if you use an insecticide. Blech. Trust me, this is not a one and done or a spray and pray situation. Getting rid of bugs, it's war. But before we go into that, I want you to know that every SNS product in this video is 100% approved by the Nevada Department of Agriculture for use on marijuana meant for resale. So let's start by going over some pictures of bugs and the damage they do so you can figure out what bug you have and then let's go over which product you need to kill them and finally how to use them. The best way to figure out which bug is infesting your garden is to look at where they are because if they're on top of the leaves, it's thrips or white flies. White flies are obvious. You shake the plant and if a bunch of white flies fly off of it, it's white flies. But if you see little gray spots with black dots that smear when you touch them, it's thrips. And if you use a loop to carefully inspect the gray spots, it turns out that thrips eat the cuticle off the leaf and the gray shiny spot that's left behind is only gray and shiny because it doesn't reflect light the same way as the rest of the leaf. And wash your hands because the black dots are their poop. And if it's on the underside of the leaf, it's aphids or spider mites. Aphids are big, you can see them, but they don't really damage the plant, other than leaving behind eggs and dead bugs in your butt, which sucks. Which is why I ask you about them in my No More Grow More Fact Cards. Spider mites though, they're small and they move around, so most people mistake the little yellow dots spider mites leave behind for early signs of a nutrient problem. But that's why I ask you about those too in my No More Grow More Fact Cards. The yellow spots happen because the mites bite the cells on the leaf. That stresses the plant out, and in response, she releases a hormone, which is what the spider mites were actually after, the response hormone. And it actually takes a couple of days for the yellow spots to show up, so there's no point in looking there for the spider mites because they moved on days ago and reproduced twice since they bit that cell. And all these pictures and all this information in the video, well, you can find that and more in my No More Grow More Fact Cards and the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. But if you see crawlers on the roots, outside your bucket, or in the runoff, or in the res, well, those are root aphids. Well, good luck with that. If it flies out of the media, it's gnats, nothing else. And the only two reasons you get gnats is if you overwater or you bought cheap outdoor media. That's why all the media you buy at a hydroponics store is 20 bucks or more, because it's been heated and sterilized, so there's no bugs or mold or mildew or any other surprises in there when you take it home and grow with it. But then, that's why it's 20 bucks or more and not six. And I want to be clear about something here. Bugs cannot attack healthy plant leaves. If they could, they'd eat all the plants on the planet. Nature has a natural checks and balance systems, and healthy plants with healthy leaves are the number one thing you can do to prevent bugs. Which is why you should always keep the bottom of your plant clean. These are the first leaves to die off and exactly how bugs crawl up and get on your plant. 
And as far as mold and mildew on your buds, well, that doesn't usually happen until you're deep into flower. And now that we know what the bug is and the signs and symptoms, let's talk SNS solutions. Because with these four products, I can kill the top five bugs growers get. Spider mites, thrips, white flies, black gnats, and aphids. And the only time it doesn't work is when you don't use it like you're supposed to. First, SNS-209. This only comes in a concentrate, and it doesn't matter what bug you have because this stuff is systemic. You just add 8 mils per gallon and water with it. The plant absorbs it and makes her taste bad to the bugs, but doesn't affect the taste of the buds. You should know, this stuff takes 21 days to break down in the plant, so SNS doesn't want you to use it 30 days before you harvest. But if you have to use this 30 days before you harvest, maybe you should start over. Next is SNS 244. It comes in a concentrate and a premix, and it's for mold and mildew. But you'll still have to lower the humidity source, or the problem won't go away. If you're using the concentrate, just mix 4 ounces per liter and pour it into a Mondi sprayer, and you're ready to attack. But if you bought the premix, you can just use it straight out of the bottle. And if you've got spider mites, you're going to want SNS-217, the bad boy of the industry. And you can trust me when I tell you that, because I've been sending growers home with this stuff for years now. And if you follow the instructions, and you do it the way I tell you, it always, 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 always works. SNS-217 comes in a premix and a concentrate too. You can, of course, use the premix straight out of the bottle, but the concentrate needs you to mix 6 ounces per liter before pouring it into a Mondi sprayer and spraying with it. This is SNS-203. It kills everything else. White flies, black gnats, aphids, and thrips. But again, you have to use it like you're supposed to. Which is why, in my 20-week garden tracker, I always recommend spraying twice a month preventatively. Once with 217 for spider mites, and once with 203 for everything else. That way, if you were going to have a problem, you can knock it down before it ever happens. 203 only comes in concentrate, and if you're going to water with it for black gnats or root aphids or spray with it for thrips and white flies, then you're going to mix 2 ounces per gallon. And now that we know what the problem is, let's talk about the process, because you're never going to kill everything with one application. So right there, you should already know you're going to have to repeat the process. But then, SNS is all natural. It's not an insecticide. So if you have to use it a couple of times to get rid of all the bugs on your weed, I'm sure the guy smoking it will appreciate it. Then, I hate insecticide in my weed, and if the Nevada Department of Agriculture is willing to put their safety stamp on it, then I feel better about smoking it. Know what I mean? And if you want more information about figuring out which bug you have, you can find this SNS bug chart in my grow book and in my No More Grow More Fact Cards. In your head though, you should calculate the cost per rotation at two applications per product. Because at the very least, you should be spraying preventatively twice. Once when you transition into veg and once when you transition into flower. But then, you're only trying to keep downward pressure on any problem that was going to happen. If you actually have a bug problem, you're going to have to add three applications per thousand watt light. Remember, 20% maintenance reduces repairs by 80%, and the more you spend on preventative measures now, the less you're going to have to sacrifice to the yield gods later. If the bugs are on your leaves, you only have two choices. If you're in veg and the problem's not bad, just take off the leaves that the bugs are on. But if you're in veg and the problem's real bad, take off as many leaves as possible because you want to remove anywhere they can hide. Plus, the fewer the leaves, the less SNS-217 you have to use. But if you're in flower, 
Well, you have to be careful. You want to remove as few leaves as possible because she's not going to have the chance to grow them back. Now let's prepare the plant before we start spraying. Let's start at the bottom because bugs come from the bottom up and usually the sickest leaves are at the bottom. Sometimes it helps to turn the plant and start on a new part to give you a new perspective and then come back to what you were doing. And the first time you do this, you don't have to do it all at once. You can do some and come back tomorrow. That way you don't do too much. All right, so we prepared her with the lights on. And now that it's time to spray, you're gonna turn the lights off. Because even though SNS 217 is approved for use by the Nevada Department of Agriculture on marijuana, it's still an oil-based product. So if you spray it on your plant under the light, and especially if your light's too close, you're gonna get yellow dots with brown spots which looks just like a spider mite problem or a PK deficiency deep into flower. A couple of safety notes. Always test anything new on one plant first. Can't tell you how many growers come to my store and tell me they lost their entire crop trying something new. Remember, plants move slow, week to week, Nothing's gonna change in the next 24 hours, right? Think about it, how long did it take to get this bad? That's why whenever you try anything new, I always tell you, try it on one plant first and then wait a day, trust me. Now, let's actually use the stuff. If the problem is in the water or media, it's root aphids or black gnats. For that, just mix 203, two ounces to the gallon like it says, then water or spray and wait. That's it, 203 interrupts their feed breed cycle, so it's gonna take a week or two before you see the results. You gotta believe to receive, brother. And while I don't know where root aphids come from, I do know black gnats come from just two sources, cheap media and overwatering. And if you've got mites, you're gonna wanna soak the whole plant, of course, but you're really gonna wanna focus on the underside of the leaf, cause that's where they live. Same thing with leaf aphids. You're gonna focus on the underside of the leaves, but this time you're gonna spray with SNS 203. And the opposite is just as true for thrips and white flies, because if you got those, you're gonna use SNS 203, and you're really gonna wanna focus on the top of the plant, because that's where they live. And if you're fighting bugs, it doesn't matter if you're spraying or watering with SNS products. The process will have to be repeated once a week for three weeks. Only then will the bug problem be gone enough to finish. This is especially true for mites because if you have even one female left, she'll lay 12 eggs every 24 hours and without a male mite to fertilize them, they'll all hatch female. And finally, SNS 244 for mold and mildew. And usually you get that because you turn your fans and air conditioner off at night, but the plants still sweat and the humidity builds up. And a couple of nights like that can ruin everything. And while SNS 244 will kill the mold and mildew, if you don't fix the cause, SNS 244 can only keep it under control. That's about it for what you need to know to keep the top five bugs out of your garden. But before we end this video, let's go over a few more tips. Remember, SNS fixes the top five bug problems indoor gardens have. But on the daily, try to keep your garden clean. Don't leave old plant leaves lying around, and especially, don't let pets into your garden. After all, bugs can only attack sick plants and leaves. And if you want more information about bugs, getting more yield, or anything else about growing weed indoors, you can get my book from your local hydro store, eBay, Amazon, or from my website, thegrowboss.com. And if you still need more information or help, remember, call before you quit. Thanks for watching.